Hi, welcome to lesson 20B, measuring the center of data. Uh, the goal for today's lesson is to learn the importance of using a variety of techniques to find the center of data. So when we start looking at the center of data, we're looking at the measures of central tendency. And what that means is we're trying to find um, basically the, the center of the data that best represents the entire group of the data. Uh, so there are a few ways of, of looking at that. Uh, there are a few ways of calculating it. One would be by looking at the median, another one is the mean, and the other one is the mode. So we usually hear it as mean, median, and mode. And the mean is basically just like the average, which um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Uh, median is another one that we'll take a look at in a second. And mode, which I'll just get out of the way right away, is um, just think of the word most. Mode and most. Um, that's uh, the part of the data that has the most values uh, attributed to it. So that in the distribution curve, the mode would be right at the right at the peak of the the distribution that would give you the mode that's the the highest occurrence of that one value. Um, the mean is like I said, <clears throat> like the average, and basically we take the um, if we if we have a large group of numbers or any group of numbers. Uh, the mean is the sum of all the data uh, data values um, over the total number of data values. Okay, so the sum over the total. Um, usually, the mean itself is not does not end up being one of the data values. It it could be, um, but usually it's not. A lot of times, it'll turn out to be a decimal. And a lot of times you'll be working with uh, data values that are not decimals. They'll just be uh, integers or whole numbers. So um, the mean, usually we, of course, also we look at um, samples. We're looking at samples. We're, we're rarely looking at population data. Um, remember from uh, 20A, population was all the data from all the group. Um, that we're looking at, the entire population, um, whereas a sample is just a small group uh, or is a subset of the of the population. So when we're looking for the mean, we write this, the mean of a sample is x bar, and that would be data value 1 plus data value 2 plus data value 3, etc., up to data value n. And that's going to be over uh, divided by n, which is the total number of data values. So we can summarize this, simplify it a little bit by writing it as uh, i equals 1 to n of x sub i. So these are the, uh, the index i slowly goes up uh, to all the different um, terms of the number of values that we have. And we're going to divide that, sorry, I'm going to divide that by n, which is the total. Now, um, the uh, subset or the sample that we look at um, is usually a very good representation of the, the actual population. So when we look at the population, we can say that that is, that the, uh, the, the sample mean is as reliable as the population means. So we can then say with confidence that the uh, sample mean is the population mean. Okay, so it just kind of works out that it's, uh, you know, because if the sample is uh, collected uh, randomly and, and um, uh, mathematically correct, then it will represent um, the, the population. So that's why we actually use samples. Uh, sometimes we look at grouped data and grouped data is 
generally when we're using um, continuous data. Okay, so the continuous data, remember, is uh, data that um, is either measured um, or calculated, and there it can be broken down into smaller parts, um, like time, distance, height, uh, that kind of thing. So um, when we look at uh, data in groups, it's usually the um, the number of frequency when we're looking at the 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 sorry the um, the mean. Um, generally, we're looking at the number of occurrences of a data value within some sort of range. Okay, so suppose, for example, we see the number um, fifteen, and that occurs seven times in a certain range, um, then we can say that uh, fx, which is the frequency, multiplied by the, the actual um, uh, data value, uh, fx is then 7 times 15, which is 105. So fx is 105. So it's not f sub x, it's f times x, which is the frequency of this number occurring. Um, and so a lot of a lot of the times, um, like I said, it's going to be used for uh, continuous data. So we can say that x bar is the sum of fx over n. And n is nothing more than the sum of the frequency. So the frequencies of each of those occurrences adds up to n. Um, when we're talking about, again, group data, um, we're talking about um, uh, we're talking about continuous data, and so if I can just give you a brief example of continuous data, suppose we're talking about uh, the heights of students, and because students are rarely exactly the same height as each other, we'll put them into ranges. So let's say we go 140 centimeters less than or equal to some value x, which is less than 150 centimeters. And then for the next range is 150 centimeters less than or equal to x, which is less than 160 centimeters. And then 160 centimeters less than or equal to x, less than 170 centimeters, etc. So notice that on the right uh, end of this range, that's not included here. Um, this range includes up to just less than 150 centimeters because it's less than 150, not less than or equal to. The 150 is then included in the next range where it's less than or equal to x, which is less than 160, etc. So what we'll do with this, um, the number of occurrences, um, is we're going to, because the values could be anywhere in there, um, just for convenience sake, we're going to use a midpoint. So we'll take the midpoint of each of these ranges for our calculations. So the midpoint here would be 145 centimeters, midpoint here would be 155, midpoint here is 165, etc., etc. And then suppose we've got some frequency, the frequency might be 3 here, 6 there, 5 here, for example. Um, and then fx would be 3 times. 145, here it'd be 6 times 155, and here is 5 times 165. So that's going to be the, the total number of um, the, the total height of these three uh, occurrences in this range from 140 to 150. So it's 145 times, one, uh, times 3 to get this. And then our sum fx, 
then, which is the sum of, of all the data values, um, is going to be uh, 3 times 145, 6 times 155, 5 times 165, and um, so that's going to go right over here, and n, which is the sum of the frequency, that's going to go right here, okay, so that's going to be 914, and then when we do our uh, x bar, that of course is the sum of the frequency multiplied by the data values divided by the sum of the frequency, and then we're going to get this total here divided by 14, and then we'll get some some approximated value here. Now it could go to um, you can round to two decimal places uh, in your working, but then because we're dealing with three significant figures here, we would just round it up to the nearest uh, whole value uh, for this result. Okay, so that's how we would be using mean uh, with grouped data. Okay, so now we're going to move on to median. And the median is when we deal with um, the order or the position of the values. So um, the median has to be uh, in order, in ascending order, and from there um, we will pick out the middle value. Okay, um, and the median splits the uh, the values in half into two halves. Um, so we've got a few values here. Uh, depending on, of course, whether it's even or odd, we'll get a different, a different case. So the the position, the position number um, of the median is found by taking the number of values you're working with plus one and divided by two. Okay, so then we'll be able to find that uh, that middle, the actual middle value. Uh, so, suppose n is odd, um, then n is the middle value, or the median is the middle value. So, suppose we've got values here, uh, say 2, 5, 6, 9, and 12, for example, then um, the middle value, in this case, because there's only five values, is pretty easy to find. Um, but if we were to use this uh, position formula, um, n plus 1 over 2, that is, well, there's five values, 5 plus 1 divided by 2, 6 over 2, which gives us 3. So the th that's the third, it's not the value, that's the, thir the position of the, of the median. So we've got 1, 2, 3. So the median, in this case, when n is odd, the median is 6. When we look at uh, n being even, then it's a little bit different. So suppose I've got values here. Uh, just change things up a bit. 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. So we've got six values, again, n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so obviously we don't have a 3.5th value. 3.5 would be right there. So what we have to do then is we have to take the value on either side of that, the two values on either side, and average those. So in this case, um, we've got 6 plus 9 over 2, which is 15 over 2, which is 7.5. So even though it's not a part of this uh, list, uh, group of data, um, 7.5 is the median of this set of uh, even numbered values 
of data. Okay, so that's the meaning here. Okay, so that's how you would work out the position of those values. So, I was mentioning before that the median and the mean and the mode, those are all measures of central tendency and they're measured if you've got a large group of data, um, like in the opening problem, the uh, number of p's per pod, I guess, I think that was what it was, um, there's going to be a lot of a lot of data values. And we want to know, well, what's the, in general, what's it telling us? What's the tendency? What's the trend of this? So what we want to do is find, well, the median, the mean, and the mode, and find out what those are telling us. So the mean, of course, is the average of everything. The median is the middle number, and then the mode is the one that um, occurs the most. So we can use that um, in fairly unrealistic, well, maybe not unrealistic, but um, relatively unimportant for us, uh, being students and maybe high school teachers, um, the number of peas in the pod. But what about um, trying to find the number of students in schools in Halton? or the salaries of uh, families in small towns, or housing prices, for example. So let's say um, we look at Oakville, because that's where the school is, and we look at the housing prices. And uh, suppose, for example, we've got housing prices 780,000, we've got 895,000, uh, 899,000, 952,000, 985,000, and 7,265,000. And so if we go ahead and, and calculate the mean for all these housing prices, well, we're just going to add all these together and um, average them. So, I don't know if I had totaled that. But take a, take a, a second, please, and um, for these six houses, um, add all the, uh, the housing prices, the, the selling prices of these homes, um, put the sum in the numerator, and then divide uh, by six, because there's six homes here, and to find the mean and then when you finish that take a look at the median now uh, quite coincidentally and conveniently the housing prices are already in ascending order um, which makes our job a little bit easier so we can see what the median would be if we use uh, the position formula uh, we know there's six values, so 7 over 2, which gives us 3.5. So the position of the median is going to be right there, which means that we're going to take the average of those. So the median is going to be 899,000 plus 952,000 divided by 2. Okay, so uh, calculate the median selling price of the homes after calculating the mean and then take a look at the difference. So those are the values uh, that I calculated. The mean, uh, unless I made a mistake, the mean is one, basically 1 1.9 million or even close to 2 million for the mean. Uh, and the median is 925,500. So if you were a family and you were, you were looking to buy a home in Oakville and you saw the mean housing price would you be tempted to buy a home in Oakville? If you were to perhaps only be given the median home price, would you then be more willing to find the average or find the uh, or sorry, buy a house in Oakville? So notice that the mean is far greater than the median. And it looks like it's this large value here, the $7.3 million home, that has skewed the data. So 
they call uh, the median um, resistant, a resistant measure of center, uh, because the uh, the size of this large purchase or the selling price of this home uh, doesn't affect the position of the middle. This could have been um, 10 million or 15 million or 25 million. The middle would still be right here. So that the median is resistant uh, measure of center, whereas the mean is not resistant because this these large values get added into the total and then divided and then that basically gets divided or evenly distributed throughout all the homes uh, thus indicating or, or uh, implying that most homes or the average selling price of course would be close to two million dollars so we need to be very careful about these things uh, these large values or even small values. These are called extreme values or otherwise known as outliers. So the extreme values uh, or outliers are the um, are these extreme values that uh, can affect the mean but they don't affect the median. Um, we have to make sure that we do include these extreme or values or these outliers um, unless there is some sort of error uh, in the data collection or in calculations or whatnot. Okay, so there's a lot of things that we have to kind of consider when we're um, when we're you know deciding on which measure we want to use. So extreme values, of course, will uh, affect the mean. Um, if the data includes outliers. So the extreme, extremely large values or extremely uh, small values, then we probably want to avoid the mean. We want to probably use the median uh, as a good um, uh, measure of the central tendency. Um, if the data is strongly skewed, again, uh, the median might be the best because it's still in the center of all the data. It's always it's still going to be like halfway along the data. Um, if it's uh, if the the data is roughly symmetric, then the mean and median will be pretty much the same. Um, so what we're going to do? So suppose we've got uh, a normal distribution here; it's roughly symmetric. Then the mean and the median will be right basically down the middle, and so will the mode. If we have um, a, uh, a skewed data, so suppose it's like this, then the mode will be still right in the middle, right at the top. The median will be halfway along, so this is the mode. The median will still be halfway along the, the data, the data set, and the mean, because this has been stretched, sorry about that, um, because this has been stretched, positively stretched to the right, um, then that means that the mean will also be um, increased. So the mean kind of follows where the stretch goes. And vice versa for the um, for negatively skewed, if it's like this, for example, uh, then again the mode is right in the middle, the median is halfway along all the data points, there's the median, and the mean will be skewed just like the data is as it's stretched to the left the mean will be also stretched to the left okay so that's basically the idea of our um, uh, measures of central tendency um, just one last little thing talking about mode um, mode would generally be used for like categorical data that's basically where, where mode will be used most. Um, like favorite ice cream or uh, um, you know born on a certain day or you know uh, shoe size or something like that. So mode will mainly be um, used effectively with categorical, to categorical data. Okay? 
Um, so that is basically the long and the short of um, Lesson 20B. We're going to look at a couple examples tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, what I'd like you to do is go through the examples in 20B um, and um, read through them. Uh, if you've got the, uh, if I've lent you the disc, then uh, listen to the self tutor uh, and the self tutor, uh, which is um, a an Australian uh, teacher. Um, she'll read or go through the steps for the solution. Um, and she can provide some extra insight uh, to the just the uh, the written solution in the textbook and um, then once you've gone through those examples then we're going to look at um, page 510 I'll uh, put these on the screen in a second um, for homework for um, practice 510, 514 and 517 for you to uh, take a look at those. Um, you don't have to do, maybe you can take a look at some of them uh, tonight and uh, you can do the rest of them in class but maybe give it give a start to some of those and if there's some that we're not really too sure about then you can wait until after we uh, look at the examples in class tomorrow. Okay well thank you for watching and we'll see you in class.